And a lot of times uh, us men, we, we focus on those things that, that attract us to a woman and we have no consideration for the things outside of those uh, more physical, more observable qualities. You know, a nice pair of, you know, 36 C's and a nice 42 inch ass, you know, of course, it's going to be alluring if it's, you know, put on the right woman and she got the right sense on and all of that. But who is she? What does she have to offer your household? What does she have to offer a child energetically, spiritually? What is she going to do for you? What is she going to do if you get her pregnant? How can she be trusted? Can she be trusted? What type of co-parent would she be if things went wrong? Like a lot of the young men that I was around and you, I mean, we was at the same school, you know, people just wasn't thinking about that. About that, about that. going on family welcome to another episode of the fatherhood village podcast the official home for proud fathers and mentors i'm dale holloway with my brother kev hick we are your tfv host kev hick what's happening man i oh, man i'm chilling man you know cooling <laughs> you know i used to say i'm cooling bro. <laughs> right right that's what's up man how the fam doing everybody straight yeah, everybody's straight, man. The boys down for bed, and you know my wife's watching TV, and you know here we are, up, you know five hours ahead of y'all in Alaska. So, you know we good, man. No complaints. Yeah, yeah. Four, four hours. Four hours. <laughs> yeah. All right. Same thing. Still, you know, almost a full day ahead. But, um, but that's good. That's excellent, man. So, welcome again, family. Glad to have you with us. Thanks for joining, showing your support. This episode is the 28th. Moving right along in today's topic is choosing the right mother for your children. And uh, one one big highlight of this conversation, uh, a lot of what we'll be speaking on and speaking about is what qualities are we in search of uh, when we're seeking the right woman the right partner, life partner, wife, um, you know, because, you know, us men, we, we need the right one. You know, we spend so much time on the dating scene, being single, um, being promiscuous, you know, doing what single guys do, but it comes down to, to getting serious and, you know, and, and putting things in the forefront uh, as, as, it, as it tends to, you know, being the or having the family that you desire that you that you always thought of having uh maybe your parents had a successful or unsuccessful marriage or relationship and um you know you either want to mirror that or have something so much better all right day also before we continue i want to give a shout out to our sponsors let's get checked Listen, fellas, low testosterone can cause muscle loss, erectile dysfunction, reduced sex drive, fatigue, obesity, and symptoms of depression. So if you're having trouble making gains at the gym, putting it down in the bedroom, maintaining adequate energy levels, staying lean, having mood issues, you could in fact have low testosterone. I can say from experience that Let's Get Checked makes getting tested easy with next day delivery. You just receive your test, send it off, and get your results in two to five days. Get your testosterone levels checked today at trylgc.com forward slash TFV. Again, that's trylgc.com forward slash TFV. The coupon code TFV gets you 30% off in the checkout. As men and as leaders, we got to be fully functional out here. The array of home health test kits available from Let's Get Checked makes staying on top of your health easy. So check it out, guys. The link's in the description. And let's get back into this conversation. So we're going to dive right into it. Kev, I'm going to have you lead. Um, what qualities, um, as, especially going back to when you, were, when you were in search of the right one for you and, and hopefully leading forward to something more serious and uh, 
you know, a potential wife? What were some of the things that you just had to have and the qualifications? I think um, first and foremost, anybody's going to, you know, be doing themselves a great favor if they just have an awareness that there are some qualities that they're supposed to be looking for. So often we look at a woman's tits and ass and hips and thighs. If at least me, I do. I see a woman from her thighs up. I don't even look, I, don't, I ain't even in the face area until I see them childbearing thighs and, you know, at the very uh, basis of my cardinality and, and, you know, my, my caveman instinct, I'm looking right at a woman's hips, child, child rearing hips. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, like we have these things that we're attracted to physically that, that come from a very primal place, you know, animalistic uh, attraction. And a lot of times uh, us men, we, we focus on those things that, that attract us to a woman and we have no consideration for the things outside of those uh, more physical, more observable qualities. You know, a nice pair of, you know, 36 C's and a nice 42 inch ass, you know, of course, it's going to be alluring if it's, you know, put on the right woman and she got the right sense on and all of that. But who mm -hmm. is she? What does she have to offer your household? What does she have to offer a child energetically, spiritually? What is she going to do for you? What is she going to do if you get her pregnant? How can she be trusted? Can she be trusted? What type of co-parent would she be if things went wrong? Like a lot of the young men that I was around and you, I mean, we was at the same school, you know, people just wasn't thinking about that. You were not thinking about your future. A lot of guys wasn't, you know, I was, that's why I was always really slow to move like that with young women. I really wasn't out here doing too much because I couldn't trust these young women, partially because I didn't know where I was going, you know, and so uh, somebody who's not protecting themselves isn't protecting you. And so it's just really important that, you know, the awareness that qualities are supposed to be being observed and being, you know, searched for is the first and foremost biggest favor you can give yourself. Now, what those qualities are from that point, depending on what kind of life you want to live, you know, mm -hmm. peace is king in my house. I always want peace. I always want to be able to communicate in a sound way. I want my child to be nurtured, to be great. I want him to feel supported and feel loved. Um, those things can always happen. Um, I, you know, it's just really important for me, or it was when I was young, before I had kids, that if I had children, I could give them a peaceful environment and a healthy environment. And so I want a woman with a healthy mindset. I want a woman that's emotionally mature. I wanted a woman who knew how to disagree in a way that was constructive. I know I wanted a woman who had some patience because kids do some dumb shit, you know, and sometimes I'm not the most patient. I needed a woman who was going to balance me out, you know, and kind of fill in my blanks and write my wrongs, so to speak. I needed a woman mm -hmm. who was as smart as me, as wise as me, who could compete yeah. with me, keep me on my toes, who could spar with me in conversation. Like that shit mattered to me because I, I want my son to be evolved. I, you know, my kids to be evolved. I didn't know if I was going to have sons or daughters, but I got sons and, you know, I've chosen my partner wisely, but many men can say the same because they were not concerned with those things. I've always been concerned with them. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, all good qualities. I, I relate to all of those. And I think it didn't get as serious or something that I really uh, spent a lot of time uh, dawning on and, and spent a lot of time dwelling uh, in thought because I guess the single life was, was so, um, new, it was such a thrill and, you know, I didn't, I didn't think, you know, for, for, you know, for myself making the right moves years from now, like I could have slipped up, got some girl pregnant and this one, even the one I was trying to be with, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of things that, you know, I, I was mm -hmm. able to escape un, you know, unscathed and things of that nature. But I think once I turned probably about 23, 24, I started kind of being more consciously aware of who I spent my time with, um, having more, I guess, intellectual conversations or the more I was discovering things about myself and the more I read, the more um, I learned, you know, that kind of put my level of thinking, it kind of heightened a lot of things. And so, like you said, with the mental, or excuse me, the, the conversational sparring, I knew right away that some couldn't hang or the conversation was dry or just wasn't on that same level. 
um, that I was on or my expectation was was much higher. So yeah, things started like, you know, the, the thrill and, and the excitement of being single and, and the life that comes with that, the ups and downs, uh, you know, became very daunting, um, undesirable. So, you know, I had to, mm-hmm. I had to focus a lot of my time on myself. So um, the, learn, the more I learned about myself, the more I learned about who I wanted in my life and the type of person I wanted in my life. So like you said, those things that you mentioned, those qualities, those attributes, um, I thought a lot on. And, you know, it, it came a time I was just cutting, you know, women off left and right. And it came a time I didn't, I, like for a short period of time, I wasn't talking to anybody because I put a yeah. lot of pressure. Yeah, I put a lot of pressure on myself to uh, form my first uh, business, you know, with the clothing brand with Dale Lore. And uh, on the side of uh, being in the military, deploying and working and, and things of that nature, I had, you know, time was of the es- essence and I didn't have a whole lot of time. So I'm like, I'm serious about what I'm trying to start here. So unless this woman meets A, B, C, all the way to Z, then I, I ain't really got, you know, no real time for you. Like there's, there's no you and I, there's you and then there's me. Um, but yeah, I wasn't talking to anybody for a short while. And lo and behold, the next person I came into contact with was my wife, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it, it worked out that way. Um, you know, as far as the qualities, man, to kind of reiterate, uh, I, I looked at how she, treated herself, treated her family, um, you know, those she felt uh, she was close to, what type of friends she hung around, like what were her friends doing, right. you know what I mean? Um, those that, you know, she was clo- closely, or you know, saying associated with and, um, you know, cause that speaks about her character and, and what she tolerates in, in, in her energy and things of that nature. Uh, but yeah, how she carries herself, how she thinks of herself, uh, the past relationships. I mean, you know, once we kind of dove into, you know, how those things, you know, uh, played out, what was, were things her fault? Was she able to confront those things? You know, how did she uh, move on from those past relationships? What she learned? Was, was it something that was always yeah, the other person's fault? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, all of that she, stuff, man. She, I, I never even had, like, you know, you have these frivolous encounters with these young women and, you know, you're just out here doing what you do. Man, I didn't have as many as, as have to people around me because I would not even have sex with a woman who I felt could be a shitty mom. Like, that was mm-hmm. my, that was, like, that was a rule for me. You know, when I coach these young women now and I'd be like, listen, if he if you if you don't see fatherhood in him, don't give him no ass. Like you might as well just call you just rub that one out, but don't get no man, don't get no weak man that ain't taking care of his kids, no ass. Uh dead be that shit and get no ass, period. Ever. And I tell them that because again, things can happen. You end up pregnant. Now you you now you baby mama number four or five yeah. with with no support, right? So for me on the on the on the flip side of that. When I met a young woman and I see her mind went right, you know, shit, even if she was fine, even if she had the the perfect body, like I wouldn't do, I wouldn't touch her just because shit, I I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be your baby daddy having a bunch of issues with you because your mind ain't right. Having a bunch Mm -hmm. of issues with you because you got trauma and you ain't getting, you know, mental help and and you got a bunch of shit you taking care out on my kid and and me and, and destroying our relationship dynamic. You know, so I'm gonna tell you, man, I didn't even lay down the women who who wouldn't have, who, like if it was on accident and they would have got pregnant, I, I've never even laid with no woman that couldn't have been a great mom, you know? And so that was just my personal rule. You know, don't, first of all, don't do nothing to get yourself caught up. But if, if one must be caught up, be caught up with the right person. And uh, that that cut a whole lot of ass off for me as, as compared to my peers. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it, was a, it was a worthwhile sacrifice because again, we could, we could all point to somebody who got a crazy baby mama, you know what I'm saying? Who, yeah. who puts a man in a position uh, where now he has to try to prove his, his love to his kid because the kid is hearing uh, opposing messages that that may or may not be true. Um, you know, we we know uh, men who have been separated from their children who who want nothing more than to be fathers, and so it's it's very very important that you choose the right dance partner, man. Uh, otherwise, it could ruin your life. You know. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, we, we've all seen it. Um, some of us, some of the listeners, listeners may still be going through some things of that nature and, um, you know, it's come back to haunt them or, you know, it's, it becomes reality. Um, so, but yeah, I, I took plenty of chances, unnecessary chances, um, ill-advised, you know, didn't use, you know, the proper judgment. And I could have really been suffering from, from those, uh, from those decisions, man. So, you know, the angels, the ancestors was looking out, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. it, it could have went yeah. way left. And, um, you know, so I'm blessed and very grateful. Um, and, and so, you know, like I said, we, like you said, we, we telling these individual men, uh, men that's getting back on the date scene, maybe the first relationship, uh, or the, 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 the marriage didn't go well and, and they got to get back here on the scene, but hopefully they're, um, you know, they have more insight. They could, they can, you know, act in a, in a more mature way this time around. If, if men can go to bat at things another time around and do things a lot better, have more of a, a insight on how women may react or, or be able to detect these signs and, uh, you know, see things before they happen and, and, and notice like, hey, I, I shouldn't be with this. I've seen this before, you know, I didn't I didn't read this book before. Um, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, man. So as far as these qualities, is is it true to say, I mean, of course it is. There, there are instances where women and men have, they put on this facade um, and, you know, they want you to believe they're a certain way when, when they're certainly not, you know, they put on sort of a masquerade and try to draw you in and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, sort of trap you into a corner and into committing and to maybe, you know, going further in a relationship, maybe having children, getting married. And then it's a lot of things that go unnoticed, undiscovered, things get worse instead of better. Um, how do men kind of navigate with that? Is is it something they should they should chance and, and continue fighting for for the sake of either the relationship or the children, or you just gotta know when to cut your ties? I think um, you know, where there's smoke, there's usually fire. Mm -hmm. Uh a lot of times what I would do when I wanted to know who a person really was was I would get around their family. Um, and I would ask them the hard questions about their old relationships. Uh, generally, what people say about others is a, more of a reflection of them than others. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you start talking about a woman, uh, start talking to a woman and she's telling you all about her ex, if she's a perpetual victim and nothing ever you know, happened on her behalf, not, none of it was ever her fault, it was always his fault. He's the villain. She's a, she's a victim every time and she can't you know, introspectively just say like, you know, I did this thing and I could have done it better. I could have grown in these ways. I could have contributed this, like people who are aware of their faults um, and, and, and uh, in an attempt to evolve themselves, uh, take responsibility and, and attack and address those things. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for signs of evolution, signs that she's on a journey, that she cares about her growth and evolution as a woman. Um, it, that's in conversation when you're speaking to a person, it, it should be obvious what they're trying to aspire to, not only professionally and financially, but spiritually and energetically. When a person doesn't have anything to impart in a conversation about growing in those ways is because they're probably not on their journey or they're just not very good at articulating it. So you can look at their history. What have you been or, or what were you last year that you or that you are not this year, or what have you become this year that you were not last year? Like mm -hmm. there are ways to get dig into a person's um, e evolutionary thought process, and the, the thing is, they must have an evolutionary thought process. A good mother, a good spouse, is always trying to evolve herself, just like a good man and a good husband. You're always trying to evolve yourself. Man, you have these conversations all the time. You always trying to figure out how to get to the next level of manhood, how to get to the next level of husbandhood, how to get to the next level of fatherhood. Like 
whether or not we doing this podcast, you like, yo, Kev, check this out, bro. I've been trying to do this. And, you know, when my son come in the room, like I'm working on trying to, like, we have these conversations because you're always on a journey to be your best for your family, right? For yourself. Mm. You want to be great. You want to be a great man. You want to look back at your years and be like, man, I did that. You know, I, I made the, me- the most of my time. You got great men mm-hmm. to look up to. So you're trying to aspire to be as great as the men you know, or even greater, you know, but you're always on the journey. You know, even as a young man, you were always on a journey, um, yeah. you know, and it's the same thing with me. That's why we connect. That's why we're doing this. But mm-hmm. you need a young woman who's on the journey. And if a young woman that you meet, she can have an ass, she can have a tits, but if she's stagnant, if she's, if she's complacent and she's not on a journey and she doesn't even have that capacity to understand why somebody would be on a journey when they could just be chilling, She's the wrong one. Right. Like a lot of these brothers need to be getting vasectomies uh, because they ain't no no damn journey. All they're doing is hitting a bunch of women. I don't know why for the life of me, a man want to have five and six and 13 babies mamas when you could just get a vasectomy for $300 after the insurance shake it down yeah. and do all the having sex and do all the cheap sex you want. Why right. go around not protecting yourself? And it's the same thing with these young women. So for me, it was about finding somebody who first has qualities, right? And and knowing that I need to find quality in a person because parenthood is about being, uh, you know, a quality driven person. You got to put that quality into your child through the environment that you allow them to grow up in. But also, you know, you got to find these qualities as a parent, but you have to possess those qualities and you have to be on a journey, right? So for me, it's about, uh, you know, finding a woman that has what it takes, being a man that has what it takes, and then also making sure that we can both align our journeys and both be on the journey and stay on that journey because it's very difficult to move through life with a person who's stagnant, with a person who's static and complacent where they are, especially if where they are isn't good enough, right? What does that give a child, right, to watch Mm -hmm. mommy do nothing, right? What does that give a child when, when mommy doesn't have patience, mommy can't homeschool? Like, I'm so proud of my wife right now we talk about this COVID shit all the time. My wife has become a full-time homeschooler or homeschool mm. teacher. Like, and then we took my son out of the school system. My son is not in any school system. He's in the school system of the Hickman house. Like my wife is completely <laughs> one. Dope. Oh, yeah. Old school homeschooling him. And he's thriving. He's learning more. I think he'll be advanced by the end of this year just because he's working with my wife instead of the actual school system. But a lot of women aren't capable of that. A lot of women don't have that skill set and that patience to be like, you know what? We're going to take it from here. We're going to make sure our son has the best, right? And if I got to give it to him myself, if I have to become a teacher, grow these skills and then do this for my son so that he can have the best shot at a great education, I will do whatever it takes. She's self-sacrificing, right? This is again, this is against her natural sleep rhythm. This is against everything, but we're doing whatever it takes to make sure that our son is developed and complete and whole and happy, right? And a lot of women won't do that. And a lot of men won't do that. But that's the type of shit that you're looking for. You're looking for somebody who can self-sacrifice, somebody who can, again, nurture, who can love without cause, without reason, right? Who doesn't need uh, an immediate payback, who does it because it's what needs to be done. It's the right thing to do, right? And when you meet people who do that, who love others without cause, when they have a cause to love you, they will love you so much harder and they will love your child so much harder. And that's what you're looking for. And that's at least what I was concerned with. So that's why I didn't, you know, I didn't fool around with as many women as some of my counterparts because I always was looking for some special, uh, you know, some special qualities. Bars, bars, love it, man. Excellent. Um, Man, man. So just to kind of highlight some things that you pointed out, um, you know, alluding to your potential wife, obviously your wife now, but for those listening, she needs to be a team player. Um, this is a journey yes. that, like like you said, you're both traveling along. And when the road gets rough, the thick gets thicker, you know what I'm saying? Like, how were you both assist each other? When, when, when... <laughs> I, that was, that was the quote. <laughs> it wasn't. It was. <laughs> I got I got you, bro. When the thing. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, man. So you know, when, when things are troubled, man, uh, you know, how how is she going to assist you, pull you up, um, help lift you up mm-hmm. in, in whatever capacity that may be, mentally, uh, spiritually, intellectually. 
Um, you know, because we, we're going to deal with a lot of things as, as life progresses and life moves on. And how is she going to help you? Obviously, it's a together thing because, you know, you got to do your part as well. But um, when seeking this individual, you need to know the signs, go through certain smaller things and to see how she reacts to them. Is she kind of standoffish? Does she kind of like, well, all right, well, does it not seem genuine when she says, hey, well, call me when you need me? Like, does she really go out of her way? Does she really check on you? Um, does she make you feel like, okay, she really cares. She's, she pulled up to the house to drop some food off. You know, I'm like all kind of things she can show you without necessarily telling you. Go ahead. But, but you know what though? Um, and not to cut you off, but you just reminded me of something. Okay. So all of those things are sometimes what a woman's going to do to a man or for a man that she's, she's smitten by that she likes a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. which don't become uh which don't become very helpful if you piss a woman off because you know what they say about a woman scorned a whole mm -hmm. bunch of bad shit yeah uh, so what what i was in observance of was not necessarily how she treated me trying to impress me but how she treated people who didn't who, who didn't have love to to withhold from her how she treated people who she was not trying to sleep with or, or not trying to be with and then cuff into a relationship, how she treated the people who, who had nothing to offer her and had no leverage over her, right? Again, it goes back to your decency as a human, right? When you love people without cause, right? When, I, when I'm at a restaurant and I see a young brother, he, he's, a wait, he's a waiter and we ain't got a waitress, we got a young brother waiter, right? I'm gonna tip that brother as well as I would tip the young woman waitress, right? She look at me, say, okay, he's a generous heart. Right. When I see her, I'm watching how she deals with the young women waitress when they come over and they pretty too. Right. How, how does she manifest, you know, uh, in, in her giving and her gracious in her in her love for the world. Right. Does she mistreat somebody because she thinks the girl's looking at me, too? Is she comfortable with herself? Can she love people who might be a threat to her relationship or her, her threat to her chances? Like th this all matters. Do they give to the homeless? Right. Do they yeah. do they help people they don't need to help? Do they volunteer them? Do they, do they volunteer themselves to, the, to people in, in, in servitude? That all matters to me because if nothing else, parents are servants and, 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 um, and, and helpers for their children for a lot of years. You know, children need a lot of help for a long time. Right. You know, they're not like animals. Animals are actually born much more independent. Animals, most animals are born and they can't walk. Humans can't <laughs> walk for a year until after they're born, right? Like you start mm -hmm. thinking about what needs to happen, what services need to be provided by a parent. Um, a person has to be selfless uh, to not get too overwhelmed in helping their child, especially if you have multiple kids. And so you want a woman have that, who has that strength and who has that, who has that capacity because every woman isn't inherently a mother at heart. That is a, a myth. There are some piss poor mothers and there are some women who just don't want no, want nothing to do with it. And they know, so they don't have kids, yeah. you know, but that's one of those things is that a, a woman might treat you like a king because she wants you, but that doesn't necessarily mean she's going to treat you well uh, if things go badly. And that doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to treat your kids well, simply because she liked you enough in the beginning. You have to have a, a woman or meet a woman who's great to everyone she encounters who hasn't given her a reason not to be great. Right. Who, who loves the world without cause, who gives of herself, who's selfless, who nurtures people around her, who helps, who is a supporter of those who need support. And those women, uh, by nature, make much better mothers, just like a man that understands his servitude and his responsibility to the atmosphere immediate to him. A man who cares about his community. These type of men make good parents and good fathers because they understand a man's role in society. But if you take that from a man and you just you just act like, well, he, he's really nice to me, but he has no sense of responsibility. He doesn't care about his community. He doesn't care about anything outside of what's right in front of him. He might not make a good father because as soon as that kid's not in his face, that kid's not in his mind, right? So you gotta, again, it's just about making sure that you're looking at the person and the human that you're choosing, not just the, the, the vessel or, or the, the attractive qualities. Right, excellent point. Excellent point. It, it, it is more to that, like you said. Um, and, and like I said, you, you can't have your blinders on and, um, you know, just be focused on how she's treating you. Exactly. So that that speaks to her character, because, you know, with with character, 
it's, it's all about how a person can treat and help others when those same people can't return the favor, you know, um, you know, it's all about the, the sacrifice, you know, what she's willing to do, uh, how far she's willing to go out of her way. Just like you said, from the kindness of her heart, like that's something that she, she's not worried about getting that back. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be reciprocated because right. it's just how she operates, you know? Right. And, and I can say that's exactly how Angel operates, man. Like, I mean, she, time and time again, like she was always, um, you know, assisting and, and doing so much for her grandparents, um, other elderly members of the family, my mother, my grandmother, um, without me asking. As soon as she found out some things or she had a separate conversation um, with them, I mean, before I know it, you know, my grandmother, my, my mom would say, like, hey, tell her I said, thank you. Did you know she did this, this and this? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, shoot. And that was like another way to my heart. Like she taking care uh, of the family without, you know, even, you know, blinking an eye. Yeah. So excellent, excellent point. It's something that uh, my boy, E, you remember Ian, man, he yeah. he, he speaks very highly of Angel and, um, you know, they, they they got to meet on on a couple occasions and hung out and he's like, yo, man, from obviously his own encounter and, and how I speak and, and the things that I share about our relationship to him, he's like, hey, man, you got you a five percenter, dog, because he said, hey, man, don't mess that up. Don't yeah. come back out here, man. <laughs> it is trouble water out here. Um, so, you know, he sees it. A, a lot of other indiv individuals see it uh, in and outside the family and say, hey, man, like you have you a, a phenomenal, exceptional woman. Um, and like I said, with that, like I have to, you know, do what I need to do to maintain that and to help uplift her and, and, and um uh, you know, be at the top of my game to to uh, uh, assert my my gratitude and um, you know ingratiate uh, the position I'm in. You know, and so any last words you wanna you wanna add or or some things you wanna you wanna lead and, and end this conversation with? Yeah, man. I think to the young brothers dating, you know, have a purpose. Whatever you're doing, it, it needs to be intentional. If you're whoring around and you don't want nothing but some ass, it better be intentional. Meaning, plan that out. Be strategic. Have some tact. You understand me? Uh, some of these brothers just don't apply any thought to anything. They're just sticking and moving. And, you know, if you ain't getting STDs, you're mm -hmm. getting babies that you probably can't afford because you're young and unestablished. You know, so just have some tact. If you want to stick and move, stick and move. But only stick and move to girls who who are cool with that don't be out here fucking up the, the the dating pool for everybody else tainting all these young women fucking up their minds making them think that all of us are like you you know you in a specific a, a specific space in your life that that's all that a woman can do for you i get that we all been there but you know what you're not supposed to contaminate the dating pool you're not supposed to shit in the water mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. so yeah don't be out here aimless and if you want kids then move around women who who would be good mothers and be a good father. Like have have that mindset, have that nature. And if you want kids and you know you don't have the school, the tools and the skill set, go develop those things. You know, work on your responsibility, get on your evolutionary journey, journey, pick up your spirit. Um, you know, do the things that will require um will be required, I'm sorry, of a father, you know, as far as energetically and what you what you possess. Uh, to give another kid, you know, what, what type of influence you would have over a child. If you don't know enough and you can't provide enough and you can't impart enough wisdom on a kid, then you need to go get your shit together, get back on your journey. Um, but just have an aim. If you're horn, go be a whore, wrap it up, get a vasectomy, but keep that shit together. But if, if you out here and you want kids, uh, then be a great man and start practicing that early because a, chi a child will need your greatness before you realize you have it. Um, you, you, in fact, many times will discover you've become great in ways, you know, when your child calls upon you in ways you didn't realize you could answer. So um, just know what you're doing, yes, know sir. what you want, and apply that same planning and that same strategy to everything in your life and always be on your journey, whatever it is. Excellent. Excellent. I couldn't say that any better, man. Yes, sir. Hey. You might have to refine that list if, if you out here on the dating scene, man. Like I said, keep 
keep these messages in mind. Um, continue to have these conversations like we always say. And uh, reach us on IG. Get us at, get at us on Twitter. Um, you know, it's easy to find us, man. So, again, we appreciate the support. And without further ado, I'm Dale Holloway. That's Kev Hick. Peace and love.